So you can see here a whole set of folders going down this way, and you can see that they're numbered. The rest of my vault is all notes, and they're all in alphabetical order. And you can also see that there are a small set of notes here at the top where I do have some numbers before them so that I can place them and keep them there. So let's talk about how to keep your entire vault organized. We just need to organize it better. I know there are some people who have um, a map of content or an MOC for their entire vault. I don't exactly do that, but I do have a home note. And I have two versions of the home note. One is in text form. The other home note that I have is in the canvas view. And um, you can see here, I have everything organized with the home note here. And then I have my goals over here. And then I have three major areas of my work as an academic. And this is very much related to how I organize my vault, these contexts of what I do. There's a lot of overlap, there's a lot of crossover, but I do tend to keep things organized in terms of teaching, research, and service. If I were to go into teaching, I further have things organized in terms of classes that I'm teaching. This changes each semester. So these are all MOCs related to classes I teach. And that is one way that I organize my vault is with MOCs and related to my teaching. You'll also see here that I have a whole set of research projects. Again, these are all projects that are live. These are not projects that I've worked on in the past. I would have those organized in a different way, but I want an overarching sense of what are the research projects that I'm working on so that at any given moment I can kind of keep track of, okay, where am I on that project? Where am I on that project? So you can see here, if I were to zoom in a bit more, again, these are all maps of content that I have organized in this canvas here in the research projects area. And then I do the same thing for the service that I'm involved in with this semester. These are the things that I constantly have obligations and responsibilities that I want to have an overview of. For me, the home note is a nice way to zoom out of everything so that I have an overview of just sort of like all the things going on at any given point in time. So now let's take a look at the folders. So you'll notice right away, I have a bunch of folders with numbers on them. And then I have this folder, which doesn't have a number. It's just hashtag imagining possibilities. And the reason for that is I want this one to be up top. This is a folder that is related to a book project that I'm working on. And I'm in and out of that constantly. So I just had that right at the top where I know that everything related to that book project is in there. So I also have notes that are not specific to this book but relate to this book with the hashtag imagining possibilities. And that way, at any point, I can find all those notes that are related to that book project and find them easily. Everything that is specific to this book is in this folder. Anything that is related to the book, but not necessarily specific to the book, does not go in that folder. And so you're seeing right away how I use folders, where something that is basically only going to be in that context is in that folder, and then other things that relate to it, I have a way of connecting them to the folder. In the references, I have these literature notes, and highly recommend that whether you're an undergraduate, graduate, a professor, that you have a folder that has all your literature notes in it. That's what that folder is. The second huge folder for me, this is, goes back to my teaching category of things. I have a folder on the courses I teach, and what do you think's inside that folder? A whole bunch of other folders. <laughs> So let me show you a bit of how this is organized. So each folder is a class that I teach. These get updated pretty much before each semester. So they're constantly evolving. This semester I'm teaching our qualitative research class for music educators. So I'm going to click on qualitative research and you'll see here there's not, it doesn't look immediately like there's a whole lot in this folder. And that's because I have another subfolder and an MOC. And this is a system that I use so I can stay very organized. Well, let's take a look at the MOC. This is the map of content for this class. Here, you can see I have a note or a file for every single separate class. You can almost think of these as lesson plans. I don't think of them as lesson plans, but for those of you who are teachers, these are essentially lesson plans. I think of these as plans of possibilities. I have a whole other video on that. Each class has a separate note with the number and the date of the class and the assignment that's due. So that way, let's say it's Tuesday night. I'm getting into class. The next class for me is the 14th. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the class and now I'm completely organized. I have the assignment that's due and I can open that up in another tab if I want. So I'm organized for the class through that note. I have a folder that's research assignments and plans. 
background. So I have all my notes in there. Let's go to one other class that I'm teaching this semester. For this semester, I have, just like in the qualitative research class, assignments and plans. I have all the assignments in here going all the way through the whole class, and I have all my plans of possibilities or project plans. It's a lot of notes, but they're tucked away in that folder, so it's really not a big deal. And again, I have an MOC where I have everything organized. So again, I have folders for all the classes I teach and then subfolders for classes and assignments. So that's how I organize all of my teaching in Obsidian. And I just love that I can tuck it all away. It's so much going on at any given point, but I just have it all located in that folder. All right, let's move on to the next folder. The next folder I have after references and courses I teach and teaching ideas is initiatives and projects. You'll notice that I have a separate folder for research, and I'm going to explain in a moment what the difference is between these two folders. Right now, I only have two folders and two notes. Over here is a project that I've been working on for quite a long time, the J. Dillon Music Tech Initiative, which I would consider when I situate what I do at ASU, it's part of my creative work and research, but I'm not studying it like a research project. So I actually make a distinction between creative work type projects for what I do and then projects where I have an IRB and I'm actively researching that project. That's just for me. Some people might want to have not make a distinction between those things. So I keep those types of things in this folder and you'll see that just like everything else, I have an MOC map of content for that project. For me, the MOC is the place where uh, I keep everything organized. And then I know that it's in this initiatives and projects folder. I do want to have folders for each of these things because I end up having so many notes that are specific to them and I want them all in one place. And yes, I can use an MOC to keep them all organized. But if I had them all throughout my vault, it's not that I couldn't keep them organized with the MOC. The issue is when we get down to the bottom half of my vault, I don't want those notes cluttering up my vault. Okay, the research folder. This is another example again for me of why folders are critical. MOCs would not be enough for me. And as with other folders that you've seen in my vault, my research folder is full of other folders. And there's just something nice about opening it up and not having a ton of stuff thrown at me. So let's take a look, for instance, at the Liquid Vapor folder. That's the one that I'm probably working on most regularly in addition to the active shoulder rest. In the research folder, like every other thing, I have an MOC. However, with a research project, I actually have two different MOCs. I have an MOC for the whole project, and here you can see all the different resources that I need are on here, all the different kinds of notes, there's just a lot of things that are organized for the entire project in this MOC, but I have a specific map of content for data and analysis. The other way that I'm organizing it is with the canvas view. So if you're curious, I'll just show you really quickly. You can see here I have a canvas view, but all of these different parts of canvas um, are set up so that anytime I add a new file or new card, I throw in a temp some templater information and it sucks it into the data view. That's a whole other video. Um, right now, I'm just you know showing you that it is organized. And then within this folder, I have a bunch of other separate files or notes, all organized in this research folder. So again, folders are key, and within the folders, having a map of content is key for me, for staying organized. Obsidian is super powerful and helpful for our work if we have it organized and if you organize it well. So if you found this video helpful, check out some of the other ones that I have on Obsidian and related workflows. Have a good one and I'll see you next time.